हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज डॉक्टर अमरप्रीत कौर लेक्चरर ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट टुडे आई विल कंटिन्यू विद पॉलिनेशन पॉलिनेशन इज सिंपली ट्रांसफर ऑफ पॉलिन ग्रेन्स फ्रॉम एंथर टू स्टिग्मा डिपेंडिंग ऑन वेयर इट हैपेंस लाइक इज इट हैपनिंग इन द सेम फ्लावर और डिफरेंट फ्लावर्स इट इज डिवाइडेड or you can see it is further categorized into three types the first is autogamy second gynogamy and third zygomy first autogamy the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of same flower okay is known as autogamy second gynogamy it is a transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of another flower but in the same plant okay plant is same but this transfer happens in two different flowers of the same plant because the transfer of pollen grains it involves an agent so it is also um, called as cross pollination it is a type of cross pollination and genetically it is similar to autogamy since the pollen grains comes from the same plant now zygomy it is a transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of another flower of different plant species okay in zygomy the plants are different before going ahead i will like to discuss about the adaptations uh, in a plant that ensure self pollination there are mainly four types of adaptations one is bisexuality homogamy cleistogamy and bud pollination firstly bisexuality it means that both the essential worlds are present in the same flower means anther as well as pistil are present in the same flower means it is having both androecium as well as gynoecium now homogamy homogamy it is the maturation of both androecium and gynoecium at the same time it is actually a synchronization in the release of pollen grains and stigma maturation means when the pollens are ready to dehiscence at the same time stigma matures the third adaptation for autogamy is cleistogamy okay it is a condition in which flower does not open why it does not open there may be certain conditions but it is helpful for preventing cross pollination now bud pollination when self pollination occurs in the bud stage before the opening of flower it is known as bud pollination it means when a flower is in a bud stage the pollination happens so when it matures and the flower it bud becomes a flower there is no risk of cross pollination now i will like to discuss about the agents of pollination broadly they are categorized into two categories one is abiotic and other is biotic okay abiotic means that are non living and biotic means which are living already i have explained in my previous lecture that in a word wherever a is attached that means no for example here here it is written as biotic that means living okay and when you add a before the biotic it becomes abiotic that means not living so in abiotic firstly it is by wind the agent is wind 
This type of pollination is known as anemophily. Now, the characteristics of plant or flower in which anemophily occurs. For that, I will request to all of you kindly refer to figure 2.10. Okay, it is uh, at page number 29 of uh, your NCRT book for class uh, 12th. Okay. This figure it is labeled as a wind pollinated plant showing compact inflorescence and well exposed stamens. In inflorescence it means arrangement of flowers. Okay, so the compact, they are very compact and uh, the stamens, you can look uh, in the diagram which are of pink color, they are exposed. So, this is the first criteria um, for the plants in which anemophily occurs. Second character, the pollen grains, they are light and non-sticky. Flowers have large feathery stigma uh, that you can still see in the picture. And uh, nectaries, they are absent. Nectaries are, you can say, the glands which are responsible for secreting nectar. Actually, nectar is mm, sticky in nature. Uh, so, it is absent because it will not allow the pollen grains uh, to fly. Okay. For that purpose, they are absent. There is single ovule in each ovary. We have examples like it is happening in maize, wheat, sugarcane and bamboo. Not only in bamboo, but I am giving the examples. There are many plants in which pollination happens with wind or anemophily occurs. Now, water. When pollination occurs by means of water, it is known as hydrophily. Okay. Hydrophily. I request you to refer figure 2.11, okay, of the same book. Here at diagram A, there is written pollination by water in Valicinaria. Specifically in biology, the diagrams are very important. I always give emphasis on diagrams. I insist students to have a clear idea about the pictures so with each topic i am giving you a reference of the diagram so kindly refer to the same diagram then i will explain further firstly the characteristic features of the plants where hydrophily occurs firstly the pollen grains they are light and unwettable means they cannot become wet maybe they are uh, coated with some adhesive or, a, or some kind of wax the second character is that stigma they are long and they too are unwettable pollination by water may occur at two places okay firstly on the surface of water and beneath the surface of water when it occurs on the surface of water it is known as epihydrophily and when it occurs the beneath the surface of water it is known as hydrophily let's discuss epihydrophily that is happening in valisneria and it is clear in your diagram so let me discuss the female flower have very long pedicel, therefore it reaches the surface of water. Pedicel, it is a stalk by which a flower is attached to stem. So in Valisneria, the pedicel is very long. Male flowers, after breakage, they float on the surface of water. And pollen grains, they are released onto the surface of water. Right? Examples of hypohydrophily 
or the pollination that happens beneath the surface of water there is zoostra and water hyacinth now biotic agents firstly the flowers in which pollination occurs by means of biotic agent they are very bright and they have nectar these both characters they were absent in the plants where pollination was occurring by abiotic agents okay the reason for bright color and the presence of nectar is only to attract the agents you can say it is a alluring agents majority of the plants they use a range of pollination like pollinating agents like bees butterflies flies wasp ants moth okay and also bats there are also examples where birds were responsible for pollination so these things are very common a very interesting story is there or you can say a maxim maxim means a um, saying okay somebody has given a good statement that means maxim the world famous scientist einstein once said that when the last bee dies after the four year the human race will end that much is importance of honey bees in our lives because they are the pollinators because of them we are getting food understood now i will discuss um uh, pollination with the help of insects it is known as entomophily entomophily or pollination by means of insects it is the most common biotic agents of pollination i have already discussed about them the agents they can be any kind of insects now the characteristic features of the flowers pollinated by insects firstly they are large sized they have small size flowers and they make a cluster of flowers okay such arrangement is known as inflorescence so where you see the inflorescence just be sure that the pollination it occurs with the help of insects third character the flowers they are colorful and fragrant okay you will get a, a very good kind of scent from these flowers nectaries are present so there is a nectar and what is the purpose of nectar because the sticky nature of nectar it gets attached with the um, with the legs or to the surface of the insects and by this it is uh, it assists the transfer of pollen grains from one flower to another flower sticky pollen grains are present okay and uh, some flowers they are foul ordered if pollinated by flies and beetles because these kind of insects they always get attracted by foul odor that means unpleasant smell students we have given a uh, specific terms okay when pollination is occurring um, by specific kind of insects or you can say organisms all are not considered in uh, insects but uh, they are uh, from different uh, different groups like uh, some are from aves like birds some are bats mammals or reptiles so a different term is coined for them so if the pollination is occurring with the help of birds it is known as orientophily okay if it is happening with bats it is known as charapterophily if it is happening with snails it is known as 
malacophily and if it is happening with snakes it is known it is known as ophiophily so the four terms remember it orientophily keratophily malacophily ophiophily orientophily by birds keratophily by bats malacophily by snails and ophiophily by snakes correct now some outbreeding devices these are the devices or you can say the features of plant which discourages self pollination and it encourages the cross pollinations earlier i have discussed the features of the plant okay which encourages the self pollination and discourages cross pollination but outbreeding devices they discourage self pollination and encourage cross pollination examples for these devices are firstly unisexuality formation of unisexual flowers the condition may be monoecious plants where male and female flowers are produced on the same plant this prevents autogamy but not gynogamy means the pollination it can be cross pollination but in the same plant another character it is dioecious in this male and female plant they are not present in the same plant okay male and female flower sorry they are present on the separate plants so the pollination can only be possible by cross pollination because a single flower it lacks the other gender second character it is dicogamy it means different maturation time of androecium and gynoecium in the same flower when their maturation time differs it means uh self pollination is impossible because when androecium will be mature gynoecium will be immature and vice versa when pollens they are released before the stigma becomes receptive that means when pollens they are released before the maturation of stigma it is known as protoandrous and when stigma becomes receptive it becomes mature before the release of pollen grains it is known as protogynous so both of these characters they encourage cross pollination the third one is self compatibility incompatibility self incompatibility it means the failure of the pollen grains from fertilizing the ovules by inhibiting pollen germination or pollen tube growth in the pistil okay we have a full fledged topic on self incompatibility i am going to discuss it in next lecture so you can leave it over here there is one more uh, outbreeding device it is that in some plant species anther and stigma are placed at different positions so that pollen cannot come into the contact of stigma either the stigma is shorter and pollens they are longer or they are placed um, at such position that the pollination is not possible thank you for listening to my lecture in case you have any question or any query or you want to listen my previous lectures you can visit my website that is www.amarpreetkaur that is a m a r p r e e t k o u r .com